Hey, what's up guys? So today I want to talk to you about conditional actions. Now Photoshop allows for this, it's just one of those things that people will skip over or just haven't seen usually. And some people have, and, that, and that's cool. But today consider this like a primer on conditional actions. Are they some kind of massive solution to making your work better? Not necessarily, but they definitely can be great for workflow reasons. So I'm gonna show you how to create a conditional action and what they are, just a real basic one. And then like a hypothetical scenario that might, you know, might be useful for you, but I want you really to take this idea of conditional actions and, and bear with me, I'm gonna explain in a second. Take the idea of conditional actions and brainstorm maybe how it can benefit you in your workflow. You never know what you can come up with to make your life a little bit easier when it comes to workflow. So what is a conditional action? Let's go ahead and just kind of make a fake one real quick. Um, I'm going to, this is a document I haven't edited right here. So I'm going to create a new action right now. I've got a, a, a action folder called MVP conditional actions. Again, just to test. Okay. The, but when you make conditional actions, the first thing it wants to do is have you choose other actions that are inside your action folder. Let me, let me explain that. So let's make a brand new one. I'm just going to call it MVP test, whatever does not matter. It's inside the set conditional actions, right? Hit record. Now let's say I want this process to make a decision of some form. Well, Photoshop allows that at least certain decisions, right? So if you come to the top right of your actions palette while we're recording, little what they call the burger menu here, the little lines, click, and you can say insert conditional, right? So when you tap that, now you have some choices. All right, so this is like programming, right? If then statements, anybody else uh, have a background in programming? I have a very basic one, literally back to the basic programming language 40 years ago, but not much else. However, here at MVP, uh, my development partners are amazing at this sort of thing. Um, this, is, this is a cakewalk for them. They're actually real programmers. But the basic idea of if then exists in an action script. In other words, if there's a certain situation, a condition, then I want you to make a decision on that and then do something else. If then. Right. So let's look at our possible ifs. We have if the document is landscape, if it's a square, in other words, one to one ratio, if it's the various, you know, color spaces, RGB, CMYK, is it 8 bit, 16, 32? Does it have unsafe changes? It has all of these. For whatever reason, these are the options that Adobe gives us, right? And they're fairly useful. So you can choose, for example, if the document is square, then play another action, right? See if then. So Photoshop will determine if it's square, one to one ratio, and then you can pick another action that's inside your, your folder, your set of actions. In this case, the conditional one, right? So you have to do a little bit of planning and thinking about what sort of functions you might want and then create the little, little actions that do it. And just like programming, even though this is super rudimentary compared to programming, just like programming, it can get a little convoluted without a little bit of a plan. So look what I have here. I don't have any type of conditional calling something that's a one-to-one -one ratio, but if I did, I could say, if the document's one-to-one, -one, uh, run one of these actions, uh, finalize, flatten, vertical, blah, 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 close, or my test one that I just made. So why would these exist? I'm going to go ahead and delete the test one because we don't need it. Why would these exist? Some might get called only for one specific function and that's it. Let me explain what I created again here just as a demo. All right. So I have NBP finalized. Let's say this was my finalizing process that I could do on one image. I could do on a folder of images and I do have a folder of images, which I'm going to run it on real quick here in a minute to show you what the whole process is like if I were to use an action on a, in a bulk way, right? So NBP finalize, what does it say? Well, the if, which is only one statement in there, if the current document has layers, then play flatten, okay? Now, why is that? Well, in my case, in this little demo, when I have a finalized image, I have all my layers. That's my workflow. That's what I do. I tend to keep my layers that I, you know, at least, at least the last half of the layers. I don't necessarily keep every single dodge and burn layer and everything up front if I do all that, but I do have a lot of layers. So I know that one way to differentiate my final images from my not final images are layers. That's just my analysis on my own workflow, right? So if it has layers, then it tells it, okay, cool. If it does, then play NBP flatten. If I come to NBP flatten, it does exactly that. It'll flatten the image. Then NBP Flatten says, all right, if the document is landscape, then play action NBP horizontal IG prep, which is down here. See that? Because let's say my, in my mind here, I want to get all these shots in the folder, 
in this folder. I, I, I don't know which ones are done. I don't know which ones are, you know, have layers or don't just offhand by looking at them, but Photoshop will know. And I know with, again, my workflow that layers means that they're done and no layers means they're not done, right? This, again, this is just a hypothetical scenario, right? So it'll flatten it and then it'll say, okay, go play uh, the horizontal IG prep if it's, if it's landscape. If it's not, else so if then else that's another programming thing else play nbp vertical ig prep in other words it's going to do the, the ig prep that i like for verticals because they are different processes right all right so down here i also have nbp close all right so what's what's nbp close for well on top here in the very first finalize if it has uh, if it has document, excuse me the document has layers then play the action of flatten and go through the process if it does not just close it See, so that means I don't want it around so that I can do that in a bulk manner too. There's other things you can do. There's complicated scripts you can make. This can really get advanced, but this is just the basics of how these if then conditional and, and else statements work. So for example, here's a horizontal image with layers. So if I hit MVP finalize and hit play, I get my IG prep. In other words, it crops it the way I like verticals to be cropped. Okay. For Instagram, at least sometimes, right? And it crops it to the right size. It made all those decisions, flattened the image. It's ready to go. It can be saved right now, right? If I go to this horizontal one and hit MVP finalize, it doesn't do anything. See? So that's the way Photoshop knows. Oh, okay. It wasn't, it wasn't something that needed to be finalized or at least not something that needed to follow the flow of the conditional because it wasn't something that was, you know, ready to be exported for Instagram. So I'm going to go ahead and revert this one real quick because it went through a lot of processes. So undo won't work. Give that a quick second. And I'm going to run uh, on the whole, you know, I'm going to show you the process of how I do it bulk, um, which will be a long process. Don't get me wrong, but we'll fast through, fast forward through it all and see what kind of end result we end up with. Okay. So this is a vertical that has all these layers, right? Or has layers in general. MVP finalize, play. Boom. And see, it's a different result. It crops my verticals in a slightly different way because it went through the action process inside the, the, the MVP conditional set, right? To make this choice. Now, this set of uh, actions that I've created for this demo are not super useful to everyone else. I'm going to revert this and I'm going to explain why. They are extremely specific to what I do. And down to the pixel dimensions, down to the ratios that I use, the way I crop. It's so specific to what I do. This is not something worthwhile downloading for anybody. I'm trying to show you guys what conditional actions might be able to do for you because I want you to brainstorm and I want you to think, hmm, there are some processes that could be cool. Maybe you're not a super mega scripter. You know, yeah, I certainly am not, right? And you think, if only I had actions that could make certain choices to organize X, Y, and Z. You can come in here any moment, right? And play around with these conditionals. Who knows what brainstorm you can be like, oh my God, I didn't know that I could tell Photoshop to differentiate between eight and 16 and then make another decision. That's so useful to me. I'm going to make actions that do whatever and, and, and you can run with it. Conditional actions is one of those things that a lot of people will see here, like, you know, insert conditional and they just kind of skip over it. Like, I don't know what that means. I don't want to think about it. I, I was one of those people for years. And although I don't spend a lot of time making conditional actions, they can also be very, very useful for some advanced processing. Right. Uh, and on occasion, we, you know, I have some actions that have some basic, basic conditionals in them. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. All right, so we have horizontal there, vertical there, another vertical, another vertical. Here again, another horizontal. As you can see, everything is ready to go if I wanted to you know, export at whatever settings I want to export at. That is the entire point. And all of these, I'm going to kind of zoom them out a little bit. All of these are only my completed images, the ones that had layers. That's the entire point of the conditional, right? So again, this is just one specific example of why it might work for, you know, this situation. So again, this is not an action that's like a free one to download. Uh, we do have some of those coming up. They're pretty cool. But as you can see, I could have run this um, with the image processor and it would have saved them as JPEG already into another folder, but I have them all ready to go exactly how I want them. So in that, in, you know, if you look, this one will be precisely the settings that I want, which is in my case, 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels with the black bars on top. 
um, et cetera, et cetera. This is why conditional actions can be so useful because who knows what sort of uh, conditions you might have that could lead you to think, oh, wait, if I could have an action that could make a decision for me and then run another action, and if not that, then run another, it can lead you down a cool path of, of like workflow things that can be hugely beneficial. So again, I want you to play around with conditionals, brainstorm how your workflow could benefit. It also might not. Okay. There's no reason to, to, to try to tell you that conditional actions are the master secret to life. They're, they're not, but they could be very useful for you depending on how you work. Um, and I just like me to make people aware of it because a lot of my students, when I mention this to them, if they have a situation where they, they might say something like, I sure wish I had an action that would do this, but also not that, right? Usually having to do with vertical and horizontal, um, depending on how they're processing. And I tell them, well, you can. To a degree, you just have to think about it, make a little plan of how you want it to do, and then create the actions necessary, put them all in a set. And you can make little, little mini, little mini scripts here, if you will, that can do very, very useful things. So that was a basic primer on conditionals. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below.